So this question is also related to a turning effect. An athlete is there, which is having a mass of uh, 70 kg. He's performing a press ups with a load on his back. The diagram shows the perpendicular distance involved. The center of the mass of athlete is CM and the center of mass of the load is CL. The mass of the load is six kilogram. Mass of the athlete is 70 and we want the upward force. First thing, whenever we are solving a question related to a turning effect, what, what is the first point? The first point we try to identify the pivot. Identify the point of rotation. Can you identify the point of rotation for this athlete around which point it is he's rotating? Around which point? Point I means pivot is a point around which the object can rotate. So there are only two possible pivots, either hand or the toe, the shoe, feet. So in this case, because this athlete will move around his speed or the toes, you can say, so this is a pivot. So always the first thing you will identify the pivot. That's, that's done because around the pivot, pivot will always be fixed. So athlete is either will move clockwise or he will move like he will move either anti-clockwise or clockwise. But because whenever we are solving a question after identifying the pivot, Whenever we solve a question, we'll consider the object is in equilibrium. Equilibrium means balance. So if it's in equilibrium, the anti-clockwise moment, ACW, ACM, is equals to clockwise moment, CM. ACM means anti-clockwise moment, CM means clockwise moment. So first, the weight of this load is acting downward. If mass is equals to six, how, what will be the weight? Because weight is, we always need the force. We don't need the mass, we need the force. So this will be how much? It will be equal to 60 Newton. The weight of the athlete, which is mass of athlete is 70. So what will be his weight? That is equals to 700 Newton. And with direction, it will cause a rotation. Both of them are causing with direction rotation anti-clockwise. So how to calculate the moment here? The moment, anti-clockwise moment will be 60 multiplied by distance from the pivot. So what is the distance between, the perpendicular distance between them? The 90 degree distance between the force and the pivot. So that is 0 0.3 plus 0 0.9, that's equal to 1.2. So this is 1.2. Plus, why plus? Because both 60 Newton and 700 Newton both are causing anti-clockwise rotation. So this will be force with 700 and the distance from the pivot is how much the perpendicular distance from pivot, that's 0 0.9. So that is equals to 0 0.9. So this is anti-clockwise. Then with direction, he will apply a force from the hand. The force from the hand will be upward because he will try to lift. So with direction, the force from the hand will cause a rotation that is a clockwise. So anti-clockwise moment is 60 into 1.2, 700 into 0 0.9. And the clockwise moment is a force from the hand and the total distance from the pivot, that is 0 0.9 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.3, that's equal to 1.3. So whenever we solve a question related to a turning effect, we always consider the clockwise and anti-clockwise moments are equal. So first, the weight is causing an anti-clockwise moment, weight of the person as well as the load and his hand, using his hand, is applying an upward force, which cause uh, like, like the weight and weight of the load and weight of the athlete is causing anti-clockwise. And from his hand, when he's applying an upward force, it will cause a clockwise rotation. So because we consider it is balanced, the clockwise equals to anti-clockwise, so when we simplify this, it will be 60 into 1.2 plus 700 into 0 0.9 divided by 1.3. So that will give us how much force he is applying, which is option C, 540 Newtons. So the question, whenever we have a turning effect, we always consider first identify the pivot and then we consider the object is in equilibrium.